Greetings, welcome back to Pink Odd Bird. All right guys, today we are back with the second installment of No Buy, No Die, Creating on the Fly. Um, if you don't know, the premise behind this is just really using what you have, not really uh, expending too much thought or energy or time into buying things, printing more things, um, dying more things, just using what you have as it currently exists. So what we did in the first video is I've made signatures and originally I thought that I was going to make these three books and now there's something floating around in my head that tells me they might maybe be six books of three signatures. I'm not really sure. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But the, but the point of the matter is um, I was able to pull all these pages out of my stash and make, I guess, 18 signatures. Uh, what I did off camera last time, I, so I told you guys I was going to add one extra sheet. I think I ended up adding a couple of extra sheets to some of the signatures. This is something that you're just going to have to do by feel because it's really your preference at the end of the day. But I'm happy with the way that all of these signatures have now turned out and how they feel. Um, I promise I didn't do much without you. I just added some pages. So we don't need these for a little while because guess what? Guess what? <laughs> we are about to get into the long haul. The, the biggest, most arduous, time consuming part of making a journal. And that is the the deep path of ephemera. <laughs> so we're gonna be using our stashes. Whatever is in your stash, obviously I know that our stashes are going to look different, but I'm pretty sure they are kind of similar in ways, right? And if not, then you can improvise. Just do what you can do. Don't make yourself stress about it because this is supposed to be stress-free. I don't know if you guys ever notice when I make these kinds of like challenges, I guess it's a challenge, but it's not really like a challenge, is I try and make it as stress-free as possible. So let's take a look at some of the supplies that I think we're going to need today. Oh, I guess I should tell you what I plan to do. So uh, my bestie Priscilla at Release the Crafton has a video. Well, first of all, Priscilla is posting so many videos, so many good videos, so much good content that you could be watching or listening to while you are crafting and creating. I will link Priscilla in the description box below and this video in particular that I'm talking about. Well, Priscilla made some grungy, uh, grungy envelopes. So I want to take some inspiration from that video and sort of make it our own because that's that's kind of the way that I think inspiration should work is we get inspired by somebody and we take it and we do something with it, of course, attributing it to where we saw it, or at least that's what we do on Pink Odd Bird, and then make it our own. Nothing is wrong with using a tutorial as it is and as it's shown, to be clear. But that's, that's just what we're doing today. We're taking it and we're putting a twist on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we need. So in the video, Priscilla to make the grungy envelopes used book pages, which I do have a load of book pages, but I also have this massive paper pad that is filled with these lighter weight um, pages. And they are probably akin to the actual weight of a book page. So we're going to use these or I'm going to use these. If you don't have like a, a paper pad like this or some kind of paper that you wish to use for the base of your envelopes, um, then you can use uh, book pages, anything that you have really, you're really going to just need two pieces of it or a way to get two sides to it uh, in a nutshell. Uh, also Priscilla used like a tracing or vellum paper and I do have some vellum paper here uh, that I can use. If you don't have vellum, you can use uh, sewing pattern paper, wallpaper, tracing paper, parchment paper, scrap paper, you name it. And then I think if I think what we're also going to need is Priscilla used some little ephemera trinkets. Um, if you have, I think I might have some digitals already printed with some words. Um, if I don't, then we might make our own words. If we do it that way, I also have these like little labels. So really there's just a bunch of different like little ephemeras. And if you don't have some ephemeras like, like this, then I will be sure to show 
an alternate of something that you can do, I guess, um, if you don't have little pieces of ephemera. Um, and then I think as far as other supplies and tools go, probably a bone folder, scissors, glue. I feel like these are like the salt and pepper. <laughs> scissors and glue is like the salt and pepper. It's the recipe for creating because it's like the given, like, you know, we're probably going to need scissors and glue and then a paper, a paper trimmer. I think that's all we need. I'm not too sure. I guess we'll see as we go, uh, go as we see, you'll find out. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So this goes back into the fact of whether I'm going to make three books or six. Um, either way it goes, I think we're going to make 12 of these today. I'm going to try and do as much as I can on the camera. But let's say you're only going to make one. Um, I would take probably just one 12 by 12 sheet or book page or whatever it is that you have. You might need two book pages if they're smaller. So for me, I'm going to take two 12 by 12s and that should give me two of these envelopes. Um, sorry, wait. Yes, I think so. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I think we might need some extra, we might, we might need something extra, extra. I don't really know you guys. We're just creating this together. Okay. The good news is you're watching this on video. So you have the nifty rewind or fast forward or the April, you don't know what you're doing. So I'm just going to pause it and do my own thing capability. All right. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to take out a few more. Oh, look how cute. Okay, so I've got six pages, and if I cut them in half, that's 12, right? Okay, cool. So I'm going to set this aside for now. For me, I have this white border on my papers, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. I also want to go ahead and cut these down into six, six inches. Uh pieces six six inch pieces I don't since maybe it's because I'm doing Priscilla's uh, video words are hard I know Priscilla it's trademarked but word when I'm doing your tutorial words are hard <laughs> all right okay so what I think is yeah let's see one two Okay, I think that's going to work. Okay, so I'm just going to take two of these pages. And I'm not really going to measure, but I want to make sure that I can fold this over and then have enough to have the fold over flap. Um, Priscilla did tear the envelopes because like I said, the ones that Priscilla did were grungy. Um, but I'm going to do mine not grungy style. So I'm just going to estimate, I'm just going to fold up. So I've got my pages back to back like that. And I'm going to fold up one more time. And then this is going to be the envelope flap. So it has a little bit of overage right there. That's not a problem. We can just trim it up. So what we should have should be like this, right? One, two, and envelope, right? Okay. So the twist that I want to add to our envelopes is that I want to let it have a secret pouch or a secret pocket so that you can tuck something like inside of there, something that you maybe don't want to be found. So to do that, I want to take my glue and I'm going to glue very close to the edge here on the inside of this second fold down the edge here and over here, essentially you're going to leave one side open. So let's fold that over, glue it down. A 
Also, I'm going to flip it over and we need to get this part glued down. I'm going to, mm, mm, I'm going to use, I'll use the glue. I was going to just use my glue stick, but I'll go ahead and use the glue because maybe some people don't have a sewing machine and typically right here is where I would start to do some stitching. Oops, sorry. We actually need, <laughs> we need to glue these two pieces together. So we're gonna glue them together. This is the first one that I'm doing, you guys. Um, as we do the next one, maybe I'll have a better process. So just hang in there with me. We're, we're doing this together for the first time. So we learn as we go. All right, line it up and boom, it's glued. Did I do this right? No? What did I do? Oh, this goes here. <laughs> so yeah, this is why we don't follow April's tutorials. Uh, so this actually goes right here. This glues up here. <laughs> Sorry guys. So now, actually, so next time we'll glue these together first. That'll be our first step. But hey, the more you know. So what you should have now is a little pouch right here in your envelope and this side should be sealed. See that? See, I did do a thing right. So now we need to make the actual piece, the pouch for the actual envelope. So to do that, I'm just gonna add glue here and here. So now I'm gonna glue this last little flap together. I think on the next one, it probably does make more sense to glue the two pages together first. I think, maybe, we'll see. We'll try it and see if that is easier. It's okay for us to learn together. I don't have to be coming in here like I'm the all know all professional. Sometimes I learn. Sometimes I learn as I go. <laughs> I'm gonna use my paper trimmer just to make sure this stays really straight. and I see a little bit that needs to be trimmed up here as well. Perfect. Oh, maybe a little bit on this side too. If you want to try and avoid this, you can use your uh, scoreboard, but ain't nobody got time for that today. Okay, so let me see. So I'm going to repeat this process before we move on to the next step on the rest of my pages. So let's go ahead and try the next envelope now that we have kind of like a little prototype here. I like this. So again, we're gonna start with our pages back to back and fold up a ways, fold up a ways again and fold our flap over. Let's see about gluing this ahead of time. So I'm gonna glue this flap first. Okay, so now our pages won't come apart. And then the next thing that we needed to do was, let's just flip it open and just glue the rest of it together. I think this might be the easiest way. It already feels like it's better. I don't know, let's just see. Hopefully I still do it right. <laughs> okay. And glue down, perfect. That's great, cool. Okay, so then the next thing that we needed to do was to make our pouch. So to do that, remember we are going to glue on this little bottom portion here, here, and here. You can do your opening on the other side if you want. I'm left-handed, so I think that's just what's coming natural to me. <laughs> okay, so perfect on that. 
and I'm going to burnish because I want to make sure whatever glue I added to the edge here really gets to the edge so we don't get any pe uh, peeling in our pouch, you know, and burnish. And then we're going to make the pouch for the envelope. Okay, so I do think the way that we did it this time was way easier. So for the envelope, we only need to really glue the two sides. Fold it up, burnish down. And, and the last thing would be to trim. Trim excess, overages, etc. So I do have a little bit there that I'll trim, oops. So let me go ahead and trim. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, that looks so cool. Perfect. Love it. Secret hidden pouch. All right, I'm gonna do the last few pages. I'll do one more with you guys and then I'm, I'll do the rest off camera so that you guys can see it. As now we know a little bit better what we should be doing. Or I don't know if I should say we should be doing. It sounds very uh, bossy. Now that we have a good understanding of how this works best. So, one, and two, and fold down, that's our third, open so that the pages stay where they need to. Let's glue the flap first, cool, yeah, I better add a little bit here. Okay, and glue, open, open, and then open, and let's go ahead and glue the rest of this. Make sure you get your edges because that's important, especially if you're, well, I guess we can't really stitch on this now on the edges because it'll close the pouch. So if you were going to do some stitching, you would have to do it before. So we want to make sure we really get those edges. Burnishing is going to help. That is our friend. And we're going to glue the rest of this down. Like so. And then I really want to make sure that I burnish out to the edges. So that glue gets to the edge and then we're going to seal our pouch. So for this one, again, uh, you could leave this side open. One of these ones, I'll do it on that side. <laughs> it's a habit for me. Left handed, left handed in the right mind. All right. Glue our pouch. You want to leave an opening. Okay. All right. I think you guys are probably getting the hang of this. It's becoming easy and breezy. And then the last piece that we're going to do is the envelope and then we'll trim it. All right, so let's glue, glue the envelope closed. Two edges and burnish and burnish and does it need to be trimmed? Dang, we got even better. This one needs less trimming than the last. Only this little flap needs to be trimmed. And I'm just gonna slightly trim that because we don't wanna lose too much of our flap. And there we go. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna do the same process over on the next, uh, uh, however many, I'm not mathy. <laughs> and I'll meet you guys back here. 
before I leave you guys, I just wanted to say one thing. So when we're at this phase where we have the first fold and the second fold, you know how this first fold is our pouch. What I realized is we don't really need to add glue here because that's going to eat away at some of our real estate for what we can put inside of this hidden pouch. So when you're gluing on your, um, your pouch, just do the glue on one side and then the free edge. So one side and the free edge, and then you're going to have more space in the pouch. I just realized that you guys, sorry about that. But like I said, this is the first time I'm making these, so the more you know. Okay, friends, so what we actually ended up with were six envelopes. I don't, I don't know where I got 12. If I said 12 earlier, never trust my math. But I love these so much already because the insides have a really nice complimenting um, paper to them. Super cute little pouch in there. And remember, like I said, you could it's up to you on if you want to glue the three edges for the pouch. I don't know that it terribly matters, but I'm just pointing it out because I do recognize that as a factor. But so Priscilla, I think the next thing that Priscilla does in the video is takes some tracing or parchment paper. Again, if you guys don't have this, that's okay. You can use another paper medium, but I do have some vellum here. And I'm already gonna do, I'm already gonna use a different tool that I didn't pull out <laughs> at the beginning because like I said, I'm not going to make mine distressed like Priscilla did. However, if you don't have the tool that I'm going to use for this, you can spritz on this, you can dye it, you can whatever you wanna do. For me, I'm gonna cut them down to the size of my envelopes and emboss them. So here we go. So I know I need these to be at least like six inches because uh, that's where I cut mine. So I'm going to cut down and I think I have six envelopes. So I think we should be able to get six, ooh, we might only be able to get five. Let's see. I'm just going to try and get six. So there's one, ooh, two. Three, four, five, yay. And then this little off cut here, cut it down to six inches and six. So we got six strips. Now Priscilla did double layers, but I'm just gonna do single. Uh, especially since, and remember the paper that I used for these, you guys was very thin, lightweight paper. If you do this with like a thicker, like cardstock doubling two pieces, you're going to, it's going to be too thick. I'm going to just tell you that right now. So you need to make sure whatever papers you're using for these base pages are thin because it's going to bulk up. So perfect. Yeehaw. All right. So now I'm going to get my little embossing machine and we're going to emboss these. Oh my gosh, I love it. And get them attached to the envelopes. Okay, I can never remember which uh, plates to use for this embossing. <laughs> so give me a second while I test this and make sure I have the right ones. Shout out to Gma Re Scrap Shack for my nifty embossing tool. I use it religiously. Is this, oh no, too thick, too thick. Is it just me? Is everybody else just professional? Probably. All right, cool. That's the right, that's the ticket. All right, where's my paper? Here it is. So I found this um, cute little cuddle bug uh, swirly dirly pattern. And since this is the most neutral one as far as orientation goes, that's the one we're going to use. Um, it's a little bit shorter than six inches, but you know what? This is the way the cookie is gonna have to crumble because this is what I wanna do. So I'm just going to line it up so that even pieces on the edges will not be embossed, but that's okay. Nothing is a problem. Everything is solvable. So <laughs> we're gonna do it that way. Put it through the old embosser. Ooh. 
give it a little grind. Ah, yes. Ain't that fresh. Okay, I'm going to repeat on the next five and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got our little pieces here. Very cool. And because, actually, you know what? In some of these envelopes might be just shy of six inches. So I'm gonna take those first. And I'm going to just trim off what I don't need. Okay. All right. Perfect. And actually it's not, it's even less noticeable now, the free edge on the shorter ones. Now for the ones that are actually six inches, yeah, it is a little bit more noticeable, but it's not the end of the world. If it doesn't bother you, you can leave it. If you want to do something about it, we'll do something about it. All right, so let me trim these down and I'll be right back. Okay, are you ready for your next supply that I did not give you forewarning about? Okay, here it comes. Washi tape. I'm pretty sure everybody's got washi tape. If you don't, you can use masking tape, you can use fabric, you can use whatever you wanna use. Just use what you've got. So what I was thinking is just taking, I'm gonna take a thinner washi because I guess it doesn't really matter if it matches or not. We're trying to get away from that kind of mentality for the for this project. And add a little washi. Actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit of glue just to make sure that this washi stays put. Because I'm not sure on the vellum it might be a little tricky Mickey. And add this to the old edge. And we want to give it a burnish. Snip, snip. Cool. Yes. So now it looks a little bit more finished on the edge. So I'm going to repeat on the, on the next side. Add a little glue to make sure it stays down. And burnish and snipperino. And now that's what we've got. Now you could add that around the other uh, edges if you want. I don't. I think I'm just going to leave it just like that. I'm okay with how that looks. Actually, actually, I think I might want to add it to this bottom edge. I don't, I'm going to try it on this one and see. How I feel about it and we'll see if that's that's if that's exactly what I want to do or if I'm just imagining things <laughs> all right here we go I feel like it's gonna take away from some of the emboss embossing and I might not like that but let's just see Okay, burnish down. All right. Okay, I think yes, I do like it that way. Yeah, I think that's cute. Cool. All right, so then to adhere this, I think, I, I guess you could probably use glue. 
I'm just not terribly sure I trust the glue with the vellum. However, if you know that your glue will stick vellum to paper, perfect, go for it. For me, I think I'm going to use my double tape so that way it, I can feel a little bit better that it's gonna stay down. Okay, got my tape and I'm going to add a piece to the bottom pocket um, strip and trim it and then to the two little edges on the sides. this after we get it placed definitely want to make sure we burnish to get that good adhesion so there we go one two and three now we can take this off and the only drawback to using this tape is you get you get a <laughs> one shot one shot McGee is all you get. So you want to make sure that your envelope is the right way first and foremost. <laughs> and then line it up the best that you can. I'm going to start by the edge down here. And just press right there and then lay it down right along that bottom edge and boom. Perfection. And then of course, burnish, 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 burnish. Okay, cool. So now we've got our little pocket. So I'll do one more with you guys and then I will do the rest off camera and come back and meet you here. So where's my washies? Um, I think I'm just going to take this little snowflake one. I think it's really cute. It's kind of snowflakes, kind of not. And then add my glue. It's also good because sometimes your washi might not be as sticky as you think it is. <laughs> and so, it doesn't hurt to add a little extra support for it. There we go, one. And glue. Now you guys are probably gonna end up making these in your sleep. <laughs> I bet you will. I bet you that you will. If you do, or if you are, drop a comment down below and be like, hey bro, I'm using so much paper. Thank you. <laughs> I would love to hear about it. And thanks Priscilla for sharing your idea. And uh, let me piggyback off of it. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I tore my paper. Oh, no. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's because I'm using uh, corrugated board uh, as my base. So things to note. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I should get myself a like a, a sturdier base, like be a real professional. Maybe I can do do that after, I don't know, how many years? Almost 10, <laughs> almost 10 years. Maybe I could be a professional. I, you know what, I, I thought when Tuesday morning was still in business, I thought that I had bought one, one of the big um, glass ones. And I guess I just, I guess I didn't. I thought that I did, but I guess I could have like really sworn that I did, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> All right, cool, so we got our three sides down. Now let's add our tape. Got one. And two. Perfect. Burnish carefully. <laughs> Great. So one, two, and three. 
make sure our envelope is correct amundo. Corner, edge. Oh, 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 no, no, no. There we go. <laughs> that was in my way. Curses. All right. We, did, we made it, though. We survived. We survived. Cute. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do the rest of these other four, <laughs> and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, friends. So according to what Priscilla does next in the video, we're going to probably do ours a little differently. But Priscilla went on to decorate this flap. But for us, I think maybe we might do a collage on, oops, on this part. Um, so for this, I think you're going to need things that are a little bit more ephemera-like. So I don't know. I just pulled out this little bucket of like little stuff. And then I have this also it has a bunch of little things in it. And then I do have my uh, folder that has a lot of even smaller pieces and bits. And then I also have a sticker book which we could also use so we've got a lot of options here so let's see what we can do so on the backs of these you could also use your scraps like if you've got scrap paper that's torn scrap book pages things like that you can also use those kinds of little elements um let's just uh let's just try and see what we can do here um, just going to pull maybe randomly like three things and see how it's going to look. Oh, some stamps. Those are cool. Cool. Okay. Um, have, oh, little paper or book page. Bird, uh, butterflies and so that constitutes a collage nice easy and simple so I'm gonna grab my glue again we're not trying to stress ourselves about matching a theme also thank you guys so much for all of your comments that you left on the last video the first video that kicks off this little series a lot of you guys are like yes April we need to do this and some of you guys already are doing it and so that's great like it's nice to know that we are all like light-minded in that sense where we're just like okay it's time <laughs> and um yeah like I totally feel you so thank you guys for leaving those comments I really appreciate it I'm happy that you guys are jazzed as am I about this little butterfly down and then our stamp now you can add as much or as little as you want to your collage make it how you want it but you know at the end of the day we are still using supplies that's a cute little look on the back of this envelope now so cute all right so let's go ahead and do one more and then i'll do the rest off camera and come on back um let me see i know priscilla used some words you could also use words but if only if you've already got them printed out the ones that i just came across that i found were like halloween words and i know we're not like sticking to a theme but uh, it didn't really go like too, too much. So <laughs> I'll save those for another time. But like, if you don't have words and you want to use words, you can use stamps. If you don't have stamps, you can just use your handwriting to write a little word and add it to the back of these envelopes. Like it's, it's not a major, a major pain. Oh, look, here's a little golden bird we can use. Let me pull out of here again. Let's see. There's this tag, which can go here. And then, I don't know, let's see, maybe a flower. I've got some flowers in this little, oh, 
this is kind of cool. Die cut of flowers like that. And then maybe we can put the little golden bird. Like so. This one would stand to look really good with like a little word, I think. But what we can do for that is I've got these little tiny little labels and such that we can maybe add one of these. Because I don't really want to add a stamp to that one, I don't think. So let's just go ahead and commit to it. Could have also used this side, but... I like the hot side, it gives it a little bit more contrast. So there. And then we'll glue this little piece down. Figure out which way I want it, like that. Like so. And then I think we'll take one of these. Oh, it's a washi sticker. <clears throat> Take one of these little labels. I don't know, just any one, I guess. This one will do. And there we go. That looks good. I want it to overlap a little. I think so, yes. Okay, so we'll take this little piece. Ah, no. And we'll glue that one right here. And then we'll glue the little golden bird. Right on top of that. Tweezers do help, and I think Priscilla used tweezers. <laughs> okay. And there we go. So that's two collages. We could still even add like a word or something here if we wanted to. Maybe if I come across something else, let's see. Something we can just, I feel like it needs a word, like an actual, oh. Here we go. I have some washi tape here and it's got the word hello on it. So I'm just going to take this and it's perfect because this hello, it alternates, this washi tape alternates between gilded gold and black uh, hello. So this is, oh, sorry, motorcycle. <laughs> perfect. probably hard to see on the camera but it looks really cute all right so that's two down so I'm going to do the others off camera and I'll meet you guys back all right so we're all done with the little collages on the backs of these they're starting to look so cute I hope that you guys just put things down and tried not to make things so matchy matchy and just whatever you get it's totally okay whatever you get it's totally okay all right, so I did all my collages on the same side. I probably could have mixed it up, but creature of habit, I say. All right, so Priscilla does two more things. Priscilla will add uh, stickers to the vellum and also some gilding. So I think I'm going to skip the gilding part, but I'm kind of wondering if I want to add the stickers in there maybe um, as just like a little background, which I think would be cute. So I'm just going to probably flip through here and like already. So like I'll take this sticker and I want to add a little bit of glue. I probably should get my tweezers for this because I feel like there's going to be massive regrets if I don't. But you know, the sun is winding down and I have to get this video done. <laughs> um, okay, so this one goes like, I guess there's no real way, maybe like this. I'm just going to pop that kind of behind the pocket and boom. Where's my, 
uh, you know, if you guys should play a game, like how many times does April say, where's my bone folder? <laughs> Woo, on my channel, it's probably infinite times. Okay, so that's looking really cute. That would have also been cute to maybe add like a little, the stamps like right here. That would have been cute. It looks like a little, like an actual envelope. You can do that if you want to. I'm going to not do that. <laughs> For the sake of time, I want to get this video done and it's going to take me forever to edit it. Ooh, this is going to be cute because I know it's lily pads, which is a pond, but I have this little jellyfish. And again, there's no rhyme or reason, no right or wrong. So I want to add this jellyfish to this little envelope here. And we're going to pop this jellyfish right here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I love it because you can kind of see through. If you didn't use like tracing paper or vellum here, you can still add the stickers or maybe you could just skip the stickers and maybe just add something in that top corner like a stamp or something. You guys gotta, you know, be resourceful and think of things like just because this is the way that I'm doing it doesn't mean that's the way you have to do it too because everybody's items are gonna be different, right? So we have to keep that in mind, I think. All right, so I'll take this little butterfly for this one, add the old glue. And we'll pop the butterfly here. Again, check out Priscilla at Release to Crafton. I love watching the videos that were in the story craft section. Um, they're really fun to listen to and, um, you know, craft along. Sometimes I watch them more than once just to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> so I will link Priscilla's channel down in the description box below so you guys can check it out. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Yeah. I have this little bluebird. I'm going to add the bird. like it's standing on the <laughs> on the pocket there very cute all right and then on this one I have I don't know there's this little mushroom was that gonna look weird maybe let's take um ooh, the seashells cute seashell we'll take this little seashell I'm adding the glue to these stickers. You guys are probably like, April, it's a sticker. <laughs> I feel like these stickers in this book in particular were notorious for notorious for not really staying down. So, or at least in my experience, in my area, in my realm, in my in my realm, in my book. So I'm just adding a little extra insurance to it. And we got one last. So let me find one more sticker and then we're done. And I'm out of your hair for today. I'm trying to get the videos posted at least like a day and a half apart or day, two days in part, something like that. Because these videos are taking me about three hours to film and two hours to edit. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I've got these little pink flowers here. So we'll add these flowers and then we are going to be done with these for today. But what I think is, I'm gonna pop this right here. What I think is tomorrow or when the next video comes out is we will make something. So we'll make something to go inside of our secret pocket so that people whoever get these books will know this is a pocket secret pocket in addition to an envelope okay and then I might just leave this empty so that people can add their own things I don't really know but we'll see when when we get there <laughs> things are always subject to change but this is kind of how they are looking guys so again shout out to Priscilla or Lisa craft in I'll link the original video where I saw the inspo from I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and my take on it don't forget come back the next video we will be making some little somethings to go inside of here come on inside of our little side uh, hidden pouch and yeah so I think that's gonna be it for today gang I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video if you did leave a comment down below also if you feel so inclined you can also shoot me a coffee which my coffee link is in the description box below 
have fun with these friends um, if you guys want to make some of these you can always tag me on Instagram or here on YouTube using the at symbol and I will be drawn to your page because I'll get a notification so I can come and see what you're up to all right so I think that is gonna wrap it up for me for now be sure to stay tuned because you never know what direction this odd flock of ours is heading into and until next time to the loo